Here we go, chapter 23, the ocean floor. 23.1 is studying the ocean floor. Number two is the continental margin. Number three is the ocean basin. And number four is the ocean floor sediments. Now we're going to start off with 23.1, studying the ocean floor. We have two vocabulary terms, echo sounding and core sampling. Make sure you have those in your lab notebook before we begin with the definitions. When we come across those, those will hopefully, you'll be more familiar with them if you do have those definitions prior to us starting this section. Now the two objectives, identify methods scientists use to map the ocean floor, and the second one is describe techniques of echo sounding and core sampling. Before we begin this section though, there is something mathematically that I want you to have down in your lab notebook, because we're going to revert to it a few times in this chapter. First one is distance equals rate times time. So that's a mathematical concept that we're going to need, especially early on in this section. Now, to determine the shape and composition of the ocean floor, scientists use techniques such as echo sounding, core sampling, and satellite observation. The first type of echo sounding is single beam echo sounding. Now, this is exactly what it says. There's a single beam sound signal that comes from the, from the vessel, from the ship, echoes off of the ocean floor, the sea floor, and then it goes back to the ship. The other type is a multi-beam echo sounding. This multi-beam is exactly what it has. It has multiple beams, can cover a larger area in a shorter amount of time. Now echo sounding is also called sonar and is used to find the distance from the surface to the ocean floor. A precision depth recorder sends the sound signal to the seafloor and records the time it takes to echo back. So let me kind of put you in a situation here. Let's say that after emitting a sound signal, the ship receives an echo in six seconds. Now, in water, in seawater, sound travels about 1,500 meters per second. So, my question is, what is the water's depth? Now, several students, a common mistake I see is that they'll take six and multiply it times 1,500. Is that what you did? And you would have gotten 9,000 meters. But remember that it only took three seconds for the sound signal to reach the ocean floor. We don't want the depth from the ship down to the sea floor and back to the ship. We just want it from the ship down to the sea floor. So the actual answer is 4,500 meters. Now the intensity of reflected sound beams determines sea floor composition. Now rock and gravel reflect sound waves more strongly than mud. So the rock and gravel, the intensity of the sound wave is greater when the seafloor is rock and gravel than when it is mud. The sound, if it's mud, will actually become weaker when it's recorded by the ship. Core sampling is a process in which a hollow instrument removes a long cylinder of material called a core from the seafloor. Now this could be done in one long layer or you can, re you can remove up to 1500 meters in total length by retrieving these cores in shorter sections. Now layers of sediment from core samples are studied to learn more about Earth. Different types of core devices including a gravity core which is driven by its own weight are also used. Now variations in the height of the ocean surface are caused by variations in Earth's gravitational field. We learn this by looking at the core samples using echo sounding and getting other multiple types of, of recorded data. Now, massive undersea mountains have extra gravitational attraction that causes water to bulge over them. Deep trenches offer less gravitational attraction and account for a minute dips in the ocean surface. Several satellites have helped in finding those differences on a minute scale. We're talking like maybe three one hundredths of a meter. Now, other satellites collect similar data and have led to high resolution images of the oceans that are available many of them online today. Now satellite observations provide greater range and speed in the mapping process. This is, a, this is a diagram of the Pacific and Western Atlantic Oceans. Now if you look on this you can see by combining the data from the satellite and the data taken by radar altimeters which are part of the satellite and the echo sounding land is shaded in black Red represents the shallowest water and violet represents the deepest water. You could see the ridge system extending throughout the world's oceans and it shows up clearly as lines of green and yellow on this map. You could also see the mid-ocean basins and you could see deep sea trenches. You'll, all, you'll learn about more about these features in 23.3.
Now scientists can use the data to make a map of the entire ocean floor. Although, be careful because we don't know as much about the bottom of the ocean here, in the here in, on Earth. We know more about the surface of Mars than we do about the, the sea floor. Next up will be 23.2.